Jackie, should we go to work? Is it time to go to work? Yeah. Let's go to work. Come on, let's go to work. Yeah, let's go to work. Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So today's job is to repair a broken coupler from a locomotive. Now this job is completely and 100% illegal, except for in the application I'm gonna do it for. This is for a static display. This will never turn a wheel again. It's never going into interchange. This is just for a display, a non-running unit. So we can actually weld this up and make it look good and, and put it back. Now, based on what I'm seeing here, this is an old brake. There was actually some breakage here that's old and some darker rust here, which tells me it's been broken for quite a while and then it just the newest rust. So the failure is, has been a long time coming and now the customer wants to keep the original coupler with the locomotive. Um, I can guarantee this is not the original coupler that went with that locomotive. Um, just because there is a stamp date or cast date on it of 2 of 42 does not mean that it is original to a 1942-1943 locomotive. Um, based on the wear I'm seeing, this thing has seen very little use, so I'm guessing it's been put on in the last 20 years or so um, of its operating life, maybe less than that. Uh, but since the customer is always right, we're going to go ahead and fix this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to gouge out on each side of this casting and bring it down to a wide point where we can get in and fillet weld it. And the same here, we're going to clean this out as best we can um, so we can get a nice deep fillet on it. So we'll go ahead and we'll start by disassembling the coupler, take all the, the knuckle out of it and all the coupler lock mechanism. And then we're going to put it over here on this welding table, which is a preheat post heat table. It's got a burner in it that I built um, and this thing works incredible. So we're going to go ahead and get the grinding done and then get it on the table and warm it up. Alright, so I gouged it all out. Um, you use the torch, um, and I started with the torch, and then I switched over to the plasma torch just to speed up the process. And then you gotta just kind of get the thing to fit right. And uh, I got a little bit of little bit of touch up to do here and there to get it just perfect, but uh, that's about where it needs to be. So we'll get the burner lit and uh, get this thing preheating. All right, everything's lined up and looking good. Light up the burner. And uh, I'm going to put a couple of tack welds on there just so nothing moves before I, and then I'll go have lunch while this thing heats up. It'll take about an hour to get that up the temp. So I'm going to let that heat up and uh, I'm going to go over to the house and have lunch and look at this, it is absolutely beautiful out here today. I have a feeling that this weather is going to turn on us here soon. I've been working on trying to get things ready for winter, things put away, cleaned up, the sawmills all cleaned up and shut down for the winter, got my firewood over there. So just been working on outside stuff, trying to get ready. and. Uh, just not ready for winter, but I know it's coming. So I'm gonna go have lunch and I'll come back in a little bit and we'll see where this is at. All right, she's been heating for a while. Let's just see where I'm at. Oh, 315, that's perfect. That'll, that's a good starting point. We'll go ahead and start welding. Um, probably weld the sides first, get a long weld in it, and then we'll lay it down and then start welding all the way around working around it.
Well, that's our first pass all the way around. I left the heat on. I'm gonna leave it uh, cooked for just a few minutes, let everything kind of normalize, and then I'll go ahead and rotate it and start the next pass. All right, so I got a bunch of passes done, um, lots of cooling and settle, uh, normalizing, really, between passes. I still got the fire going underneath, and I got a lot of fill-in to do on the sides, but our root passes are good and hard, they're good and heavy. Um, got a little bit of grinding to do here and there as I go, but the bottom is almost there. One more pass, and then there'll be some grinding on it, but you definitely don't want to go at this full bore and let it, you know, weld, 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 and then let it cool all of a sudden because um, it'll definitely crack. By keeping the heat under it and letting it cool a little bit between passes and kind of settle out, you're keeping the stresses down. And I've done quite a few of these big weldments before, and this is, this is the best method I've found to keep things from really having problems. So I'm pretty much letting this cool between each pass right down to the same temperature as everything else. And uh, we're actually looking pretty good. She's, she's holding a pretty consistent temperature all the way across. So I turned my heat down a little bit on my burner there and we're gonna let it cook um, just to maintain heat in it for a few hours so it doesn't crack, but the welding is all done. And it was built up extra. This is a cosmetic repair, um, but I honestly would not be afraid to put this right into service and pull a train with it. Um, I feel this is a pretty strong weld and repair. Uh, put in some pretty high amperage and did all the proper procedures. I mean, keeping it hot while welding it. Um, I've never had a failure of one, uh, a something like this. I've never done a coupler before, but I've never had a failure of a large casting like this before um, when I do it this way. So we'll let it cool for a few hours on low heat and then we'll shut it off and come out tomorrow and get to work. What the? No! Not ready for this crap. Rocky, you hate winter too. Yeah, it's miserable. This sucks. Well, that was an extremely disappointing start to the morning, but um, this thing's nice and cool. Um, I see no cracking whatsoever. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my earplugs in and start grinding this, um, getting it ground down to where it needs to be, and then we'll pretty it up and make it look like it never got repaired.
Well, that came out really well. It looks very smooth. Um, you can hardly tell that it was welded other than I know it and you know we ground it. But the last thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna take the needle scaler and we're just gonna kind of hammer that weld and try to make it rough like a casting. So let's finish that up. Little bit time to rust and nobody will ever know that was repaired. So let's get the final assembly done on it and I can get it palleted up and shipped back to the customer. So in the beginning of the video I was actually fighting with this piece. I had to heat it up with the torch to get it out. Um, it was rusted in tight and it wasn't doing its job and what it does is when you pull the pin it kicks out and opens the knuckle. So now we've got that all cleaned up. I got the hole opened up cleaned up a little bit and cleaned up the pin on it and of course they don't go in the easiest because it's a tight squeeze back there but once it drops in now it floats like it's supposed to Well, there you have it, all done, repaired. Um, you almost couldn't tell. If it wasn't for the rust and the rest of it, you wouldn't even know it was repaired. Um, came out nice. And that's the secret that I've learned over the years of, of doing big, heavy castings, um, cast steel pieces, is, is put them on this table, get them hot, get them about 300, 350 degrees before you even start, and then let it cool between each and every pass, um, normalize out, and then when you're all done, Turn the heat down and let it sit for about three hours or so and slowly just let it normalize all together. And um, after about two or three hours, I turn the heat down a little bit more until I just shut it off and let it cool overnight. And I've never had one fail doing this. So pretty cool. Now, again, this repair is totally legal for interchange and, and railroad service. But since this is a, a uh, static display in another state, um, I have to look at the paperwork. I think it's Indiana or Pennsylvania, Ohio, somewhere out that way. Um, static display in a park, it'll never run again. It doesn't even have an engine in it. Um, this is just fine. So I'm not gonna wind up in a federal prison, but if I do, there won't be a video next week. So stay tuned and until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.